Detroit Basketball! Yeah! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, man. Yes, sir. Yo, this Pistons team is coming together, y'all. It's coming together, man. The Pistons are slowly starting to turn that corner. It's only five or six games in. We're only six games in, seven games in. I understand. But what you're seeing tonight and what you saw last game is this team slowly getting better, right? We're only seven games into the season. We should not have expected this team to come out the gate just swinging, come out the gate on fire with all the new pieces, all the new coaches, all the new scheme, yada, yada, yada. Y'all know the deal. But we're slowly starting to see this team coming to form. And it's going to be a long process, but we're getting there, man. I am so excited about this win tonight, man. The Pistons had their first winning streak of the season. It's only two games, but I don't think it's over. So let's get to the nice game, right? The Pistons, they won their second game in a row, beating the Lakers at home by double digits, 115-103. to 103. Man, man, this win felt so good for a lot of reasons, man. Let me get this out the way. <laughs> for anybody who knows me, you know... That my favorite player of all time is LeBron James. Right? But nobody plays about Pistons. Ever. Going all the way back. Nearly 20 years. When we beat them in the playoffs in 2006. LeBron was the enemy. When he single-handedly beat us in 07. LeBron was the enemy. And every time in between. LeBron is the enemy. If you're not wearing red, white, and blue. On that particular night. You are the enemy. And that was the time I was on tonight. A lot of things to get to man. I don't even know where to start. Um, most complete win of the season. Right from start to finish, we talked about it in previous videos about the Pistons' inability to play four quarters. Right, they either start off hot and they finish slow, or they start off sluggish like last few games and they finish hot. Tonight, from jump, this team came ready to play. You could tell they had this game circled on their calendars. Right, you can tell this team had this game circled on their calendars for sure. This was a very, very important game, and shout out to the Lions, man. We had some Lions in the building tonight. It's so cool to see that our most popular team right now is still supporting our team that's on the come up, right? The Pistons are trying to make their way to where the Lions are now. So it's just cool to see Detroit sports teams showing up for each other, and tonight the Lions showed up and showed out for the Pistons, and thankfully, the Pistons were able to get a dub with them in attendance. So let's get to some things I noticed here tonight, man. Um, it was a lot of interesting things going on tonight, man, between LeBron playing here in the 22nd season to Bronny being on the bench he didn't play tonight to D'Angelo Russell looking like a golden lord from Meteor Man with his crazy blonde hair <laughs> Anthony Davis is an MVP player man he had 37 points tonight we're gonna get to him later but he he's tough cover our guys did a really good job on him tonight and he still had 37 points right um I can't stand him though because every single time he drives to the hoop he's yelling it's, it's so many plays where he doesn't get touched. He doesn't even get sneezed on. He doesn't even get breathed on. And he's, hey, hey, hey. It's like, bro, you didn't get fouled. That's, <laughs> you didn't get fouled. I know you're brittle. He might as well call you Mr. Glass, but bro, that wasn't a foul. Man, who knows? Maybe that's what Cade and Jaden need to do to get some foul calls. Who knows? Let's talk about the defense tonight, man. The defense, man. The defense was there, man, from beginning to end. Jalen Duren was locked in tonight, man. Jalen Duren is going to be just fine, guys. We're going to get to him later, but Jalen Duren is going to be just fine. Um, JB Bickerstaff mentioned that he's still learning how to use JD properly, right? So, which is interesting because he's had Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. So, to say that he's trying to figure out how to use JD shows me that JD has something that both of those guys don't. And that's very, very telling. So, yeah, JD had a good game, man. We're going to get into him, but especially defensively. He started the game. He set the tone. He was locked in. Um, we're going to get to how he and Tobias Harris guarded the switches because, you know, LeBron James and Anthony Davis are very heavy on the pick and roll. So they were trying to take advantage of switches. But I got to say, Tobias Harris and Jalen Duran did a good job with that. Um, it's not a perfect switch, right, because you don't want Jalen Duran out on the island too often with LeBron. But with LeBron being in year 22, he doesn't have the same burst right off that first step. So JD can kind of somewhat stay in front. And he did. And on the opposite side, Tobias Harris is undersized with Anthony Davis in the post. But he battled, man. He battled his tail off. He didn't give up anything easy. He was using his strength to try to push him out of the paint. Like he was, he was playing very sound defense, man. I got to give Tobias Harris a lot of credit for his defense, right? We understand early on in the season, his offense wasn't there, but the defense has pretty much always been there. And the rebounding has always pretty much been there for him since the beginning of the season. And now the offense is starting to catch up, right? So we got to give Tobias a lot of credit, man. He missed some open shots and we're going to get to that too later, but Overall, he played a really good game. But the defense, man, the defense was was incredible tonight. It was so many plays. And Isaiah Stewart, man, Isaiah Stewart just continues to show his worth. He just continues to show his worth and his activity. He made it tough on AD tonight as well. AD tried to post him a few times and he wasn't moving. 
he was just standing AD up. He couldn't get anywhere. And he was forcing him into tough shots. And he had two blocks on LeBron tonight, right? One of them was actually overturned. They called a foul, which wasn't a foul. And the Pistons got it overturned. And on the second one, Stu actually blocked him and he stared him down. LeBron went to the floor and he stared him down. Almost as if to say, I haven't forgotten about what you did a few years ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, you once again show why he's not going anywhere, man. His fight, his determination, just his passion that he plays with, his physicality, he's not going anywhere. He does things that nobody else on this team can do just because of the high motor that he has. That cannot be taught, right? And so that is his greatest skill. I say all the time, that is his greatest skill. But he is helping the Pistons garner respect because I say it all the time, every single night, he is going to come out the same way and set that tone, right? He's going to set that tone, regardless of what's going on, whether they're up 30 or down 30, he's going to set the tone and play the same way every time. And he doesn't need the ball. Last game, he didn't have any points. Still showed up, right? That's what we need all of our big guys and everybody on the team to have that mentality. It doesn't care about how many points you score. What cares is how many points is your guy scoring. And if you, do, if you hold your guy in the check, the points on the offensive end are just going to naturally come for you because we have a very athletic team who can get out in the break and score. And speaking of athleticism, man, Jaden Ivey, man, the Lakers don't have anything for him. There is nobody on that team that can guard him, whether it's Austin Reeves, whether it's Don Connect, whether it's D'Angelo Russell, whether it's Gabe Vincent. None of those guys can stay in front. He is just too athletic and he was getting whatever he wanted tonight, man. It's so fun watching him just play freely, right? Under control, but freely. And tonight, he just showed more of the same. He's continuing to get better with his decision-making. He's continuing to get better with his pacing and just finding the right guys when it's there and just reading and reacting to the defense. And tonight, he could not be stopped. He was getting whatever he wanted. And honestly, the Lakers struggle with athletic teams. The Lakers are not a very athletic team. LeBron in year 22 as a starter. D'Angelo Russell is a starter. Austin Reeves is a starter. Rui Hachimura is a decent athlete, right? And AD is athletic, but th their overall starting five is not an athletic one. Their team as a whole is not athletic. And that is what they struggle with. That's why I tweeted early in this game that I hope Ron Holland gets extended minutes because Ron Holland was another one of the guys who played well tonight, right? His athleticism and his energy, being able to be disruptive on the defensive end and moving his feet well and just getting out in the break on the offensive end and just getting buckets. That's his game. We know his three ball is not falling right now, and that's okay. I think what his focus should be is just trying to get two feet in the paint every time for a shot, right? Because once he gets in that paint, he's hard to stop. And also in the open break, he's hard to stop. He has some pretty good ball handling skills for a guy his size, right? So he can a lot of time be a one-man breakup because of his ability to put the ball on the floor and his speed and his athleticism and just being able to get into the paint and finish. And he did a good job of that tonight. I noticed this too, man. Everybody was crashing the glass, right? Even the guards. Because we understand that Anthony Davis is a monster on that glass, man. So Jalen Duran was solid on the glass tonight. Isaiah Stewart was solid on the glass tonight. But the guards were very solid, man. They were very solid just crashing the glass and looking to get out and push. And that was really good to see that. And we always talk about the importance of getting off to good starts, right? We mentioned it already, but I just want to highlight this. This was the best first quarter start of the season for the Pistons. They came out pushing, right? Jalen Duran had one quick foul on Anthony Davis, and I kind of got concerned. But he kept it in check and he played disciplined defense the rest of the way. I got to give him credit for that. But the Pistons just came out the gate, man. They came out the gate ready to play this game. And you could see they wanted to win this game. And one of the biggest takeaways from this game for me was the Pistons' response to the Lakers' second half run, right? The Pistons were up 20 points in this game, right? They were up 20 points in the first half. Second half, the Lakers got it down to 10. Fourth quarter, they got it down to 5 or 6. And the Pistons responded. Usually in games like this, you see experienced teams win these games, right? They creep into the game, they get back into the game. Once they get the lead, mentally, it's, good, it's tough to overcome, right? And so the Pistons did not allow them to come all the way back tonight. The Lakers made a run, which is understandable. You expect that from a good Lakers team, right? But the Pistons didn't get out of sorts. They didn't lose their composure. And Kay Cunningham said, put the ball in my hands and let me make the right decision. And that's what Kay did tonight, man. I got to give Kay a lot of credit. First triple-double of the season for Kay tonight, man. 17 points, 11 rebounds, 11 assists, man. I mean, he, he really took over in that fourth quarter. And just throughout the game, he just played, for the most part, a very sound and smart basketball game. He didn't try to force too much. He didn't have his jumper going completely tonight. He was only one for five from three. You know, 7 for 17 from the field. But he was still picking his spots well. And he was looking to get other guys involved. He had 11 assists 
and three turnovers, right? So you got to give him credit for that. His turnovers have been a problem as of late, but not tonight. He had basically a four to one turnover to assist ratio tonight with 11 assists and three turnovers. So you got to give him credit, man. He really played a side. We don't win this game without him. And down the stretch, he said, give me the ball. Let me make the decisions. You can see he wanted to be the one with the ball in his hands to make those decisions late, right? So you got to give him credit for that. He really got the piss and settled down when this thing really could have gotten out of control in that fourth quarter. So shout out to Cade, man. This is what we expected from him. And as a leader of this team, he's showing what he can do. And I think just having the weapons around him just makes things so much easier for him than I have to exert so much energy on both ends of the floor. So even as far as just keeping the guy's composure, there was a point in the fourth quarter where the Pistons were up seven or eight points and Sue got caught for offensive foul, trying to get the offensive rebound, which wasn't an offensive foul in my opinion. Um, and he kind of waved the referee off and the ref teed him up, right? It can't happen late in the game. It can't happen late in the game when points are important. K pulled him to the side, said, bro, calm down. We can't, we can't have this right now. Harness that fire that you have and just keep your composure in these moments because we need you, right? We need you, but we need you to make sure that you're not hurting us. So K was really just doing everything, man. Whether he was scoring, getting other guys involved, or just rallying the guy. You saw him every time the Lakers would try to make a run, he would bring the guys together just to make sure that everybody was on the same page and make sure that everybody was keeping their composure. That's what you want from a leader. That's what you want from a leader. And that's what he gave you. That was probably the biggest impact he had on this game outside of the triple-double was just his composure and making sure that he kept his guys as the leader composed. So he played a really, really great game. I got, I got to shot him out for that. You can really see, too, that the Lakers were trying to get under the pace and skin. There was a point where Jaden Ivey went to the free throw line and D'Angelo Russell just walks right in front of him, just trying to throw his rhythm off. And Jaden wasn't having it. Jaden pushed him out the way. He said, hey, bro, get out the way, man. Just play basketball. Like, <laughs> I love to see that. Just that fight and that fire. Hey, y'all ain't going to push us around. Y'all may be a better team than we are on paper, but when you get in between these lines, you got to prove it. And they were not backing down tonight, man. So I love to see that. Individual stats. Jaden Ivey, 26 points. Four rebounds, four assists, a steal, a block, four turnovers. On 10 for 16 shooting, one or two from three, five or seven from the free throw line in 35 minutes. Jaden played great, man. I, I think he understood that nobody on this on this Lakers team could guard him. And he took advantage of that, man. He played, but once again, he wasn't playing out of control. He was playing very sound basketball, very smart basketball, making good decisions for the most part. None of those Lakers guards could guard him, man. And he knew it, and you could see it. But he was getting it done from everywhere. He was getting to the line. He was hitting the floaters in the mid-range. He was knocking down threes, late in the shot clock. Like, he was doing it all, man. He was doing it all tonight. So he's going to continue to get better and better, like I've said. And once again, does anybody have any doubt now that Kay Cunningham and Jaden Ivey can coexist? Can we please stop with the narrative that these guys cannot coexist now? We've talked about it before. Before this season, they only played 30% of their games together. Right, You cannot give up on a duo when they have not even had the reps. And they have not had them until this season. And we're only eight games in. right? So the Pistons are going to be just fine with this backcourt. The chemistry is just continuing to build and build with these guys. You can see that they're starting to have more fun playing basketball. You can see that they're understanding where they're supposed to be on the court. They're playing really well together, man. Like These two guys are going to be a problem for the league for a very long time. man. Like I'm so excited about what I'm seeing from these guys. And I can't wait to see more. Tim Hardaway was on a heater tonight, man. 19 points and one assist. 7 from 12 from the field, 4 for 8 from 3, 1 for 1 from the free throw line. He was lights out. He was lights out, man. I know I've mentioned before in previous videos that it's tough with him being only 6'5 as a small forward. But if he continues to score like this, man, you can live with it because he's going to give you the defense as well. He's not a defensive clamper or stopper, but he's going to give max effort every single night. And tonight it really worked to his advantage because Rui Hachimura is not a pure scorer. So he was kind of able to get away with being undersized tonight because Rui just isn't that kind of player to just go get a bucket whenever he wants. But Tim Hardaway, man, he played great. He played really, really good. He hit a lot of timely shots when the Pistons needed him, man. His shots were all in rhythm. Nothing was ill-advised. It was all within the flow of the offense. He just played really, really well. He played really, really well. If he keeps this up, man, he's going to make it a lot easier for us to wait for Star Thompson to get back. He's giving us spacing. He's giving us defense. And right now, he's giving us consistency. I'm sure he made Senior proud tonight, who was also in attendance for this game. Tobias Harris had 15 points, 7 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal, 1 block, 2 turnovers on 7 for 15 shooting, 1 of 7 from 3. Those corner threes killed him tonight. He just could not knock down a corner three to save his life. They were good looks. Then they looked good. It just didn't go in. So he could have easily had 20 plus tonight if he could have just knocked down one or two more of those threes. But it happens. I'm not worried about that. Keep shooting it. They're eventually going to fall. As long as they're open shots, I'm not mad at that. We talked about it earlier, but I really want to highlight his defense, man. 
the, the Lakers are running that pick and roll with LeBron and AD. And like I mentioned, man, Tobias Harris, when he was getting switched on AD, was battling. Right? That's that's a low. That's a tough cover. You know, AD is leading the league in scoring as of right now. He had 37 points still tonight. But Tobias didn't give him anything easy. Everything for the most part for AD was a contestant shot in the paint or a jump shot. And that's what you want to do. You want to make him work. He's going to get his points. He's going to score. He's too talented of a player. Right? But make it tough for him. And that's what the Pistons did tonight. Jalen Duren is much more committed defensively these last two games than he's been all season. He had 11 points, 14 rebounds. He had 17 rebounds last game. One assist, one steal, one block, two turnovers in 24 minutes on five or seven shooting, one for one from the free throw line. So this is the Jalen Duren we need, man. He can be a double-double machine if he wants to be, right? Even if he just focuses on his defense. He only had seven shot attempts tonight. He knocked down five. So he can be a very, very efficient scorer. He can still average 10 plus points a game just by focusing on the defensive end of the court. Because if he does that, the guards are going to look for him on the offensive end, right? So he needs to make sure he's focusing on the defensive end and allowing his guards to focus on him on the offensive end as opposed to him focusing on his offense and then having the defense lack, right? So as long as he keeps his focus on the defensive side of the ball, he's going to get, he's going to score. He's going to get touches. It's just going to happen within the natural flow of the offense because guys are going to look to reward him for his defense. So good game from JD tonight, man. I hope he keeps this up because if he does, it's going to make us a lot better defensively. Just having him as a rim protector. Ron Holland played great tonight, man. Ron Holland had 12 points, four rebounds, two assists in 17 minutes on four for nine shooting. He went 0 for 5 from three. So he still, I believe he's only made one three throughout these first eight games, right? So it's going to take time. I know we have Fred Benson as a shooting coach and assistant coach here, but these things don't happen overnight. Right, it's gonna take time. A lot of the looks, a lot of the shots that he took looked good, just didn't fall. Most of them were from the corner, right? So he was four for four from the free throw line. So it's not that he can't shoot the ball. He's just extending his range to the three point line. It's taking him a little bit time to get comfortable there. But you know, within the flow of the offense, as the season continues to progress, as he gets more reps, as he continues to work with Fred Benson, he's just gonna naturally improve. But his ability defensively to be disruptive was very important, man. They put him on Bron sometimes, they put him on AD sometimes, they put him on the guards, on D'Lo sometimes. He can guard one through four. He reminds me a lot of Tayshaun Prince in that aspect, as far as being very rangy, very long, um, having a, a lot of athleticism, having great foot speed, and just being able to be a Swiss Army knife defensively. That may be his calling card for the Pistons, at least in the immediate future, just being able to do a little bit of everything. But defensively, he was a pest, man. The Lakers were struggling to get shots off. Um, and he was getting out in the open court and getting easy buckets. And that's one thing the Pistons have not really gotten over the last few seasons is easy buckets, right? Everything has been tough. But having a guy like Ron Holland can get you easy buckets because he's willing to work defensively and he is going to get out on that break offensively, turning his own defense into offense. We talked about Stu already, but once again, man, he played a really, really good game. Eight points, nine rebounds, two assists, two blocks in 25 minutes on three for seven shooting, two for two from the free throw line. So once again, not a stat stuffing game, right? But just doing the little things, man. Setting that tone. Blocking shots, right? Creating extra possessions offensively when the Pistons miss a shot. Tapping the ball out for extra possessions. All those things that he does, he does them every single game. And I said it before. The more he does this, the more he's going to get calls. The more the referees are going to give him those calls because they're going to make it easy for them to referee him. Referees like when they know what to expect from players. When you're consistent, it makes it easier on them to referee you. It's kind of like when you have a guy who never complains about foul calls. When he finally does get upset about a foul call, the official's going to listen because he knows that like a lot of guys, he's not just crying wolf every single time like Anthony Davis does whenever he goes to the basket, right? So the referees are going to listen to you more when you do speak up because you normally don't, right? And that's Isaiah Stewart, right? Isaiah Stewart is going to give you the same style of play every single night. So when he does get upset, and he does complain about a foul call, it's probably for a good reason. So that makes it easier for officials to referee you. And as a result, over time, you're gonna get a more and more consistent whistle from the official. But yeah, man, this was a this was a very fun game to watch. I'm proud of my Pistons for a lot of reasons. The main ones being that they kept the turnovers down. They only had 12 turnovers tonight, right? We've seen previous games where they had 20 plus turnovers. Just a very, very good overall game from the Pistons, man. From start to finish, everybody came in ready to play. And the Pistons have their first win streak of the season. And I don't think it's over yet because the Pistons have some very winnable games. Next up, they play the Charlotte Hornets. And following that, they play the Atlanta Hawks. So the Pistons could be staring down a four or five game win streak by the time we get to next week. But like I said last game, the Pistons have to bring that same energy that they had tonight 
they have to bring that same energy they have to play as close to four quarters as you can right you're not going to play 48 minutes perfectly i understand that but you can't have four quarters where you just play bad right you got to play as close to four quarters as close to 48 minutes of good solid defense and taking care of the basketball you do those two things the Pistons will have a four game winning streak going into next week so yeah man i would call this game a signature win for the Pistons against a quality opponent Right, this is not a game where where you had guys missing like Paul George and Joel Embiid against the Sixers, or the Pistons just being a better team and taking care of business against the Nets. This is a team that on paper is better than the Pistons, yet the Pistons came out and beat them. That is a signature win. This is the game the Pistons can look back on throughout the course of the season if they ever start to lose confidence and say, "Hey, when we play like this, we can beat anybody." And that's why this game is so important for the confidence going forward, right? You often hear about measuring stick games. I think this was a measuring stick game for the Pistons to see where they stack up against a quality playoff team. And tonight, they showed how good they can be when, they, when they're locked in. One more thing, man. Shout out to Deanna Nolan, who was also in attendance tonight. For those who don't know who that is, Deanna Nolan was a very big piece to that Detroit Shock championship run, man. She was a very good player, man. Very fun to watch. Super athletic. Speedy, her nickname was Tweet. Speedy, her mid-range jumper was butter, man. She would often run the court, oftentimes on the fast break by herself and just rise and just bury it, right? A good player count for her, I would say, is Rip Hamilton, right? She was just so fast. She would run off screens. She could rise on you, super athletic and just consistent. She was just consistent, man. So anybody who doesn't know, do your homework on Deanna Nolan, man. She also played with Jaden Ivey's mom, uh, Neil Ivey, as well. So, and I'm hoping, man, the shot can return to Detroit. I would love to see Deanna Nolan, maybe Katie Smith, Swin Cash, Cheryl Ford, Ruth Riley, all those girls, all those girls. I would love to see them all come back and just resurrect the Detroit Shock um, or that was here because it was fun to watch, man. And they were really, really good. So, so shout out to Tweet and shout out to the Detroit Shock. But what did you guys see that I missed in this game? Let me know down below and let's talk about it. Next up for the Pistons are the Charlotte Hornets on the road on Wednesday. I'll be right back here post game to break it all down. And big thank you to everybody who continues to support my channel. Um, the more you support, the more content I can bring you guys. Appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Rewind 2021. There was a parade in my city. Number one pick, dancing in the street. Everybody was in the good. Keep arrived in the D. And they were live as can be. They can ball, but we didn't want Dream or Bleed or Scotty B. No when he got hurt, everyone lost it. Storylines leaking, no faucet. Caught him washed when he broke his tibia. All the haters, time to get it ready, yeah. Everybody wanna be Skip Bayless. Wanna throw shade, okay, say less. Dudes went number one for a reason. It'll click by the end of the season. Yeah. When he wins, most improved player. Gonna be a movie, here's the trailer. Don't say I didn't try to warn ya. Co-signed by Win Benyama. He was raised in Texas. But now he's Detroit flexing Team you would say he was killing him Got him effed up, let me quote Eminem Nowadays everybody wanna talk like they got something to say But nothing comes out when they move their lips That's a bunch of gibberish and money lovers act like they forgot about cake Nowadays everybody wanna talk like they got something to say But nothing comes out when they move their lips That's a bunch of gibberish and money lovers act like they forgot about cake They forgot about cake, they forgot about cake uh, uh, Forgot about, how you forget about cake?